Welcome to the People Sports Podcast. A very special edition. Charlotte Wilder sitting across the table from me. Can you believe it? Yeah. You in get, person. You get so excited. Your energy, so, your energy changes in person, it feels like. Yeah, I get so excited for every well, I'm excited, you just can't see what, it. What do we got on the note? What do we got going on? Let's let's tell the people. I'm curious whenever see- we get in person because I'm curious to see how what your method is, how you how you prepare for these shows. Yeah. What's going on? Uh you have a phone. Turn down. I, I like that move. That's a good move. You turn the face down so that yeah. you don't get bothered. Yeah. You have a laptop. Yeah. And you also have a yellow notepad with a with an old fashioned pen. What's the would thought like process to, here? I, you, I don't. I don't want to see your notes. I don't want you to spoil the show. I'm just curious. Like what? Well, I'm gonna uh, read you the first <laughs> okay. uh, matter at hand on my list. I also I have a Google Doc of all of my <laughs> notes, which you know blur your eyes, but you know it's pretty long. Oh like not to brag. Um, I do my homework. But the first thing that my little yellow notebook says is apologize for migraine. Oh, uh, um, okay. Because we were supposed to be in person on Monday, and yeah. I um, really got my ass kicked. Yeah. Like, and, and it's karma. And the reason I bring this up is because I did this to myself, and I feel like you might have something in your life that you relate to. For When I was in high school, I used to get awful migraines. And I've, I've gotten one, like, before when we did the show, and I couldn't do the show, which is very frustrating. But um, in sort of the 10 years, 15 years since, I've used migraines as an excuse to get out of things I don't want to do Yes. so many times <laughs> yes. that I think now, 15 years later, karma's like, oh, you thought. Mm-hmm. And then they just hit me with like the worst ones ever. So I think it's my fault, to be honest. Okay. And that's why I'm apologizing. You're doing a great job selling it that you actually had a migraine. You're, it, I, I believe, I almost believed it for a second. Uh, the fact that you were, uh, I, I had multiple friends text me that they saw you on the beach the day oh, that you come saw me. Oh, come on. <laughs> It was it was a gnarly it was a gnarly I'm, few days. Oh, uh, <laughs> we we are here in studio. It is the the calendar has turned to August, which uh, we find ourselves in a weird moment on the sports calendar where we mm-hmm. pretend like there's a lot going on. But if we're being honest, and don't let our bosses hear us, because we are here at the Fox Sports uh, setup, and uh, we are a company that is supposed to tell people sports are very important at all times of year. Um, but to be honest, Charlotte. It's kind of a weird part of the season where it's like, does any of this stuff actually matter? Like the Olympic, yeah. like we'll we'll talk about the Olympics a little bit. The Olympics are going on. Uh, we're still very much in the Olympics, but uh, NBA free agencies is a hot topic right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, NFL training <laughs> camps are hot topics. There, there's a lot of stuff being thrown out there, right? In terms of uh, 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 things to talk about, and yet uh, none of it really has any substance. At the I end of the day. I think that this time of year is like when sports media becomes sports. This yeah. is when every sports media person, especially if you're an insider, if you break news regularly, you're like, oh, rolling up your sleeves. You're like, yeah, it's this my is, time, This baby. is our time. Yeah, this, like, is, this is a good no, point. There's no actual game that's going to compete right. with what I'm, with the information that I'm about to tell you, which is simply that a different guy got a different job yeah. than he had before. Or sometimes not. Sometimes yeah, the so- guy that had the job is going to continue at the same job. He just is going to make more money or exactly. less money. <laughs> like imagine if at your job it was there was like yeah. one day a year where everyone was like, "Dude, did you hear that Kevin from accounting got a yeah. 12k bonus?" Like it's just when you when you think about it, it's hilarious how we track these things, but it does make for sports media people feeling very important about themselves. And I'm just saying this because I'm not someone who does any of that. So maybe it sounds like well, I'm just I mean, jealous we, of people who we, break news about contracts. But we, I really mean that I think it's funny. The sports media equivalent is the tweet that says some personal news, colon. And then yeah. we're, we're like, uh, I am going to stay at Fox. But, you know, <laughs> you're like, okay, cool. Some personal like, news. My contract was not up, uh, yes, and I, I will be staying that. at Fox Sports. <laughs> some personal news. I am not quitting my job today. Yeah. So, uh, you're like, uh, no, I have not seen an NBA player tweet some personal news. I, I have seen NBA players are starting to, maybe not starting, maybe they've been doing it, but um, meme a little bit. And by that, I mean that I've you seen. You just mean like the eyeball emoji. Well, that they've they've done that, but like I saw Mike Conley uh, put on his Instagram uh, uh, a Wolf of Wall Street deal where Leo says, "I'm not leaving. I'm I'm not going anywhere." And he put his face on Leo's face. And Wait, I thought, really? Yeah, I missed that. Oh yeah. my god. So there there's that. Um, I, but but yeah, I, I want to see an NBA player. I want to see Kawhi Leonard when he finally decides where he's going to just announce it with a tweet. Does he? He didn't have a Twitter. He starts a Twitter account and just he just be, says some personal news. Some personal news. <laughs> 
And then he tweets where he's... Board man got paid. Board man. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's sort of where we're at in terms of the sports calendar, mm-hmm. which an Olympic year makes that more fun because there are actual games to talk about. Yeah. But we also have to roast all of the funny news breaks that aren't really anything that matters. Yeah. Um, but you're still into the Olympics. I am still, I'm in still Olympics. into the Olympics. Yeah. What have you been watching? Uh, I, I've been watching less as it's gone on. Mm. And I think it is because I'm old. I mean, we talked about it last week. It's that, like, it's impossible to figure out what the hell is going on. And I finally had enough, like, when, when enough times happen where you're trying to watch the Olympics and, mm-hmm. and 20 minutes into a game, you realize you've already watched this game <laughs> and you feel stupid. After, like, the fifth time of that happening, I just kind of throw my hands that up. That happened say, to you enough that you yeah, gave up. I kind of, I, I'm still watching, but... Uh, I used to, like, last week, I was waking up, and the moment I wake up, I'm throwing the TV on, leaving it on in the background. If I'm home, the Olympics were on. Yeah. Now, it's kind of more of, like, a normal television pattern where it's like, I got some free time. Maybe mm, I'll throw on the... You okay. know what I mean? Well, If that I, makes any sense. No, it does make sense, because I'm in a similar boat, which is that I don't know how to change the channel very well, <laughs> and I also don't know what app to go to, so I keep the TV on NBC... Yeah turn it on and turn it off and whatever nbc is showing is what i watch i'll watch like four hours of nbc but yeah. i don't see i didn't see, see ping pong i didn't see i just see like whatever they think i should see is what i'm watching here's part of the problem with that too is that nbc will on, on the main nbc mm-hmm. when mike Tarico shows up and mm-hmm. and and feeds and says like this is a fixed menu enjoy what i'm sure ser- you, yes. you don't get a hand picket enjoy what i'm serving you um I always, I'm led to believe, because they'll show reruns of stuff, obviously. Yes. So when, when main NBC, when mom and dad on NBC <laughs> are feeding me the food that I don't necessarily want or whatever, I just trust them. Okay. I assume that if you're showing me tape delayed stuff, that means there's nothing live going on at all. You know what I mean? Like that, oh. that, cause I'm like, surely if there was a live BMX deal going on, they would be showing it because who, why, in what world would you be showing tape delayed Olympics over live Olympics? And I'll tell you the world, Charlotte. It's the world that NBC lives in. <laughs> yes, but also it's, it's, world. it's the world that like most, peop- most people want gymnastics over BMX. They don't want tape. They don't want twelve-hour delayed gymnastics, do they? I mean, I guess yes, they do. Yes, they do. Because otherwise, when are they going to see it? That if you're is like, the if one... you're Mark, okay, I'm speaking for boomers everywhere. No. I'm not a boomer, but if you're like me and you can't figure out how to turn the t- to get to what you want, and the only way is that you turn the TV on and they show you gymnastics. Yeah. You want to watch gymnastics. But who's who's watching? That, that that is like the one thing with sports that makes sports fun is that you don't know what's going to happen. Literally anything can happen. And if we know what's going to happen, like ESPN, I, I found that with like even ESPN Classic when when that was hot in the streets and it came out, and I would watch all these that old games. Hot in the and streets. then uh, I remember even as a kid when I was like consumed with sports, I would try to throw on ESPN Classic and every so often I'd be like, I know what happens in this game, and it's not as interesting. Like it's it's. It's, it's there, there's something about that that if you know what's going to happen well i think the problem is that people are dumb and adaptable so like i knew that simone biles won yeah. bronze on the balance beam i still tuned in and i was like can she do <laughs> it like i just get used to it like at, at the beginning i was like i hate knowing this is really yes. annoying and i would watch it and i'd be like okay and now i'm just used to it so i was like i know she wins bronze but let's see how she pulls the- herself off the beam you it's know a, like it's a catch-22 because the the sports that they will tape delay are the sports that are, that have the most intrigue it's the gymnastics yes. it's the swimming it's right. it's the stuff that people are the most interested in uh so they're going to tape delay it and show it in prime time but by by virtue of being the most interested in these sports those are the sports that get spoiled <laughs> so like if you were to tape delay <laughs> If right. you were to tape delay the BMX or the the canoe slalom or whatever else, <laughs> no. I'm not. I would I, like. It's not going to spoil it for me. I'll watch it. Like that's what I find is happening with volleyball. Even like I I've been consuming a ton of volleyball and and I that's, love how you're saying consume constantly. I'm consuming a ton of volleyball and that is the sport that I continue to Mark find is myself consuming volleyball. Content. It is set three, <laughs> and I go wait a second. They just pan to the coach. I just, I remember they panned to the coach yesterday and he was picking his nose and they just panned to him and he's, either this man picks his nose a lot or I've already seen this match. No, but they, but that's yeah. what it takes. It's not yeah. like, oh, I remember that play. It's like the wait coach just second. picked a wedgie <laughs> yeah and then his nose. And I saw that because I registered that as being funny the first time I saw it. Yeah. So I, I had this thought about the Olympics too, that okay. uh, I feel like we're going to disagree with. So that'll make fun discussion. Oh, um, I love when we fight there. Uh, <laughs> I kind of I kind of said this about swimming because like we disagree on that that you think there aren't enough swimming 
uh, 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 events? Okay, no. Uh, I, I didn't say that I don't think there are enough. I said I like how many there are. You think there are <laughs> too many. I think there's many. too many. I think it's a Mad Lib. I think when the Olympic Committee gets together and they decide what swimming events to have, it's literally a Mad Lib where they're just like, they have like 30 people in the room. And they're like, uh -huh. someone say a number between 50 and 17,000. And the guy's like, 450. Perfect. All right, someone say a, a, a swim stroke. And they're like, breaststroke. Done. 450 breaststroke. Let's get it done right now. I mean, yeah. They, they have like mig, like the, what is the mixed medley where you have like the the women the do I one. Am. The women do one thing. Then you tag in the man. Re like this is a. Like, oh, wait, really? I missed that one. There, there's one where like the women swim one leg. Then the, the men take over. And then it's like, it's like American Gladiator slash Field Day it's like vibes. like a Sally Hawkins dance. Yeah, like what is going on Are here? Are we allowed to call them that anymore? I don't know. That Sadie Hawkins? Sadie. Sorry, about, Sally I don't Hawkins. know. I went to an all girls school, man. I'm doing my best. Sadie, um, Sadie. There's too many swimming events, but I, th I thought Who about this Sally too. Sally Hawkins when, was she somebody? Uh, Sally Hawkins was. Uh, I'm gonna Google. Keep talking about swimming. A, I'm gonna Google Sally Hawkins. An English actress. She won a Golden Globe. Yeah. Wow. What was she in? She was in. Uh, now we gotta figure out who Sally Persuasion, Hawkins. Persuasion. Never saw. Tipping it. the velvet. No. Nothing I've seen. No. Paddington. She was in Paddington. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Blue Jet. The Shape of Water. Oh, really? Was she the girl that... The Shape of Fell Water was... The fish? Just the fish the sex, fish right? The fish man? Yeah, it was fish sex. She started. She's the one in the poster. She's the fish is that, sex so, lady? So to you, a Sally Hawkins dance is... is you invite a fish. <laughs> <laughs> when the woman invites... Sadie Hawkins. Is the a woman. Sally Hawkins dance is you can invite any underwater animal... Sadie Hawkins is you. The girls invite the boys. All right. <laughs> Glad we figured that out. Okay. Um, Where was I with back this? Back to uh, the swimming. You think there are too many? I think there are too many sports. But uh, I, 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 instead of complaining about how things shouldn't be sports, because I, I kind of said that about surfing and, and skateboarding, too, that they don't feel like sports to me. They feel like art, Charlotte. And, and Well, I think that's a high compliment. If someone yeah. told me that something I was doing wasn't sports and it was art, I would be like, my entire life is better now. But I, I had this thought uh, as I was watching... Um, what do they call it? Sport climbing? It was just basically rock climbing. It's basically like... You like try to run up the wall. Yeah, you just run up the wall and then tag the top. And it, it, again, it looks like guts. It looks like Michael Malley should be hosting <laughs> this. <laughs> and like, Let's go to Mo so for true. the official rules. Mo! And she's like... Or like Legends of the Hindu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, so you got these young kids, like the guy from America that I saw do it. looked like he was 17 and he was good. And like, I, I'm not pretending that like I could do it. You know, I'm not saying that this isn't a real sport. You didn't train for this and that I could do this easily, all that. But what I am, what I do want to talk to you about, Charlotte, is mm -hmm. that I found myself thinking if I met this kid at a cocktail party and someone introduced me to him as an Olympian and then I asked him what, oh, you're an Olympian. Like you run like the, the, the 800 meter dash. Did you do like, what were you a swimmer? What are you? And he's like, oh, I, I climb a wall in five seconds and ring a bell at the top. I would, de there were de like, I wish this wasn't true, but some part of me would be like, oh, so you're not a real Olympian. And so I thought maybe, like, I, am I alone in this? Do you gatekeep Olympians as well? Because I've noticed the swimmers, like, every swimmer in the Olympics seems to have the Olympic rings tattooed yes. on them. Because for swimmers, this is, like, a massive the deal. This deal. is the biggest deal. And I respect the swim. Like, if I met an Olympian swimmer, I'd be like, oh, my God. Wow. Wow. But if I met a lady that rode a horse that danced... <laughs> She was like, I'm an Olympian. I'd be like, mm, uh, no, you're but not. then she'd be like, I'm Bruce Springsteen's daughter. And you'd be yeah, like, never okay. mind. May you I have with that. all of yeah. your contact info? Um, no, I think so. I've been thinking about this too, because at a certain point, it feels like they're just sort of tossing obstacle courses and lawn games into yeah. there. And I want to know I think my question is, like, what are, how robust are those sports outside right. of the Olympics? Like, is there a speed climbing community? that I don't know about that is actually huge where I feel this like, is... I feel like speed climbing is probably like surfing and where it's it's like that that go, that defeats the person. Like I, I, in my mind, if you're like an avid mountain climber or someone who loves to climb, yeah, it's almost you look like at the a, competition, you're like, this is lame. This I isn't what this what is about. I think what bugs us about it or what feels not necessarily bugs us because like do whatever you want, you know, like fine, be in the Olympics. That's sure. great. But also but... in a more real sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think what it is is that it... It's these activities that were born out of connecting with nature in some right. way and like being one with the urban planning, being one with the water, being one with yeah. the mountains, like escaping, doing something to 
reach this higher level of consciousness right. almost yes. and then you take it and you put it in a gym with plastic freaking knob guys <laughs> and you're like well who can get up the fastest yes. and you it feels it feels cheaper yes. and i don't think it means it shouldn't be there or it's not a valid sport but i think that it should be called something diff it, it, it's so far removed it's like you know wasabi the pekingese winning the dog show when you've got like a german shepherd standing there right. you're like is that even a dog that's not even a dog yeah i'm with you and no offense I, to Wasabi. He was a great dog, but like he was a great <laughs> pet. He wasn't necessarily a dog. And exactly. that, it's not a judgment value. It's just how we categorize these things and where they come from, I think, is what's annoying uh, about it. Yeah, that's a great point that like these things started as le uh, they, they're not competitions. They no. started as activities, as hobbies. And I guess you could make the argument that, that it's important to have them in the Olympics to, to give some light to these things, right. to... Um, you know, you're, you're showcasing how cool skateboarding is, right? right? So kids are going to watch this. They're going to say, oh, I did. I had no idea that skateboarding was a thing, I guess, in, in this hypothetical <laughs> world. <Okay. laughs> Until I watched 13-year-olds from Japan doing kickflips at the Olympics. And then, and only then, I mean, I guess if I it like, gives them more legitimate funding would be yeah. a reason to say yes. Right. I, I had this thought watching skateboarding, by the way, too, that uh, I think I texted you this, that because a lot of young people are great at it. Like, yeah. and I'm not talking young, like 25. I'm talking like, like 12. 13. <laughs> <laughs> like and children. The, and the same is true of gymnastics where you have to be a certain age because if they don't do the age limit. I know what you're about to say. In the opposite way. Because wasn't that the thing like the Chinese would do is like they would just like throw 12 year olds out there and pretend yeah. like they're 16 and like, like, yeah, what's the problem? And, and you're like, that kid learned to read two years ago. Yeah. And I guess my thought is, Charlotte, if if puberty is a deterrent, if puberty is detrimental to the sport, sh shouldn't we as a society take a step back and be like, let's talk about this? Yes. Let's t like. If I, hitting puberty ruins your chances of winning gold, yes. Maybe we should reevaluate yes. whether you and this <laughs> yes. sport should be taking place. That's right what I now. kept waiting, watching watching like the the skateboarding. I kept waiting for like a Tom Rinaldi type to come on and just have dramatical music, dramatic music, and he's talking about like the plight of one of these skateboarders and like. And then when she turned sixteen, something devastating happened. She hit puberty, Stop. and then like the piano, like, you saw. and that's like all this I, adversity she's facing, and the adversity is that she just simply hit puberty. The adversity is that she grew three inches. Yeah, and her body fat percentage is now slightly <laughs> yes. higher. I, and her Mark, hips are wider, so like her, her center of gravity. It's is just so like so depressing because I think though that you tweeted, not tweeted, Jesus, you texted me that because I texted you hot take. I don't think gymnastics should exist. This feels bad for you. <laughs> Gymnastics and then general. I was like, I'm not going to say that on the show. And then you go, I think, of, and then you say the purity if, thing. And now I'm saying it all on the show because, you know. What if Simone Biles inadvertently just ended gymnastics? Because she, she, or, you know, she like, she basically had the, <laughs> my understanding is she had the twisties, which is more or less like for the first time in her life, she's now thinking like, oh, I could like snap my neck <laughs> if I land. Like I could be paralyzed just right. from trying to do a simple thing here. Whoa. I never really thought about right. this. And then that is now going to start a conversation where everyone's like, yeah, this is pretty effing insane. I'd be this cool is with that because watching them, I'm like, this feel, I'm, for, I'm like, <laughs> is this fun? Like you have like the corruption among us gymnastics mm -hmm. is so gross. Like you've got all the, like I read an interview with Allie Reisman, Reisman, Reisman I can yeah. never say her name right. Um, who's from a town near where I grew up. And she was like, uh, I don't think people realize how bad this is for your body. She was like, I tried to do a cartwheel the other day and got so dizzy. She was like, this isn't, she was basically like, it is insane the things yeah. we do. And it is even more insane that we are driven. So, th so I'm just like, what if we just stop? I have a thought. Uh, we have the senior citizen Olympics <laughs> where we highlight sports. <laughs> oh, Mark. Yes, Charlotte, Everybody's hear me out. Break their no, 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 this is the point. We, we highlight the sports that you can play when you're 80 because they're great for your body. Golf. Golf is a big sport. Swimming <laughs> Swimming. Still. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I like that. Uh, a brisk constitutional walk, you know, in the morning. This is, uh, these are things there that... There should be a sport. Here we are. Sit and reach. Dog. You sit down and touch your toes. Changing the channel. Change. There should be a sport where it's morning and it's like a dew-soaked morning and the birds are out and you, everybody leaves a porch at the same time yeah. holding a cup of coffee <laughs> with a dog and whoever has the nicer time walking yeah. around the block... <laughs> is the gold medalist uh passive aggressive comments to your neighbor about 
how their lawn looks. Yeah. <laughs> call, <laughs> call your daughter and tell her she has to call her grandmother. <laughs> you know what I was thinking about yesterday, which is similar to what we're talking about? Uh, the idea of what what is not an Olympic sport but feels like it should be yeah. um, that you do in your everyday life. And I just want to just derail the conversation and mention uh, someone parked very close to me and I had to open... I had to do the move. The guy was in the car next to me. Oh, awful. As I, so I didn't want to, even even slightly touching my door to his car, I... I no, we know. can't have that. Listen, it was kind of on him that he parked that close, but still, like, I, I, I'm a pacifist, you know? Like, so I'm trying to avoid Are confrontation you? at all mm. times. <laughs> you like, see more, you see... <laughs> you, what, what, what do I say? Like, I'm getting bar fights? I think you're what a war hawk, Mark. No, I have, no. <laughs> you're, you're a pacifist, but you like a, you like a touch of chaos. A little bit. Like a I'm a pass. I'm a classic Midwestern passive aggressive guy. You know, like so I'll say a comment to you and pet. Like I'll drive away and be like, "Good park job, buddy." As I'm like, leave it. But I'm not gonna like open the door and ding his car. I think be like, oh, you actually, shouldn't have parked here. Yeah, you know, like I'm not that guy. That might be the most fundamental difference between the two of us. Yeah. Is that you'll you will drive away and be like, "Nice park job," and I'll just yeah. be like, "I'll I will." Yeah. I have told men to go f themselves before <laughs> on the no, street for. More, more realistically, I will think of the right thing to say in the shower two days later, <laughs> and then I'll retell the story I just, like, a week explode later. Explode and feel amazing, yeah. and then an hour later feel a little weird. I'll rewrite that story over the course of six months, and by the time I tell it to somebody, I look like I'm awesome and said like the perfect thing at the perfect time. Uh, anyway, Sorry, the, what anyway. should what should be an Olympic sport is is that deal where someone parks too close to you and you have to like open the door and like sl suck in your belly mm -hmm. and slide through the door, and I feel like I'm really good at that. So really, I just thought yeah. I'm like, pretty good at that. Can you do you, For being a tall guy, like, and I'm kind of. Because I'll do that, but I'll touch the other person's <laughs> car with my butt, and I feel <laughs> weird about that. <laughs> can you do it without touching their car? I because yeah, I'll like slither out, slither. but I'm like. Ooh, sorry. Do you remember the game? Was this on Fox? I, I feel like it was. There was a game show, um, where I think we stole it from the Koreans or the Japanese. Probably the Japanese. They they're always the ones they have with the wild game, game shows. shows. It was, I think it was called Hole in the Wall, where it was just like a wall. Like, you just stand there, and then, serious? like, the wall just comes at you, and there's, like, a, sh a cutout shape. And you <gasps> yes! have to, you have to, like, I remember that. Yeah. And you'd have, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> My mic just came with me. But you would have to, like, yeah, I'll demonstrate there, later. There, there <laughs> was, because there, there's a classic clip of the, uh, the woman who was, uh, uh, <laughs> bigger we'll say mm. and there's the the hole in the wall is like a petite ballerina like doing like, oh, her, no. he's like her, and she's like, that's that's from the 90s then that age, she, yeah, that like, was an early 2000s show for sure but funny is funny show uh, you know so yeah uh, no funny is funny all right Mark. That an Olympic sport. In, in terms of like the olympics the thing about rooting for the olympics mm -hmm. which we obviously love them you're rooting for countries and the U.S. men's national team yes. won the gold cup. Yes. This week. And, and soccer, yes. In soccer. Not in the Olympics. We no, not say. in the Olympics. Yes. Sorry. But it, it felt like a sort of similar situation where you're rooting for your country. Right. And when we were talking before about what we were going to do in the show, you had some interesting thoughts about how people are rooting for America right now versus how they might have in the mm -hmm. past. And I wanted to. No, I, I think. To hear uh, more about that. No, yeah. So I, I have noticed that uh, I, I'm dumb enough. I was dumb enough to believe that the Olympics, um, not would bring us together as a country because let's be honest, it's, uh, it's Ooh. been a rough stretch. <laughs> um, but I thought the Olympics would be a moment in time for this country to look back on the past, say, two years, mm -hmm. four years, five, whatever it is, a hundred years. Well, you, you name the timeline. Just look back on how we got here, and. <laughs> I think, I, in my mind, I was dumb enough to believe the Olympics would serve as a moment in time where we can pause and we can look at each other and say, listen, this country is messed up. We all know it mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways. We mm -hmm. all disagree on why it's messed up, but, you know, there's, th this is not a perfect country. We right. have problems. We have flaws. But I'll be damned. At least we're not China or Russia because that's what happens every year in the Olympics. Those are the two. It's like China, Russia, and America, and like we compete for the medal. We count. go right back to the Cold War. Yes, e yes. Every Olympics is just the Cold War fought all over again. So I was dumb enough to believe when the Olympics started, we would rally together against uh, uh, China and Russia, like we always do. That's just how it works. It's like I hate my fellow neighbor that lives next to me because he hung the wrong political flag during the election. But you know what I hate more than that is those cheaters in Russia that have been doping every Olympics going back to the start of time, right? right. Uh, I feel like that's not happening. And mm -hmm. maybe, you know, maybe your perspective may differ. But from my perspective, 
Um, it feels like because we've talked about it with the with the U.S. Uh, men's basketball team, who by the way are back. We're back. We're winning gold. I think. I don't know. They play tonight, okay. so we'll see how. They, right. By the time people are listening, <laughs> yeah, to this, let's we're see probably, how. That, I'm just. I'm like. <laughs> Australia won by thirty, and uh, everyone listening <laughs> to this is like, "You dumbass." Um, the the we talked about the basketball team losing is semi funny to people. Uh, I feel like the similar thing happened. The 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 women's soccer team lost, mm-hmm. and there didn't really feel like there was a a sense of damn that sucks there was certainly a large portion of this country that like got the light out of it frankly and uh, there are a million reasons why that's the case but i i even even something i I mean like obviously a lot of stuff is politically charged but like the basketball team's not politically charged per se like that's just like uh, people are like i just I, i don't know i don't and i think what it is charlotte i think ultimately at the end of the day is that we are too good as a country because i think uh we we have now reached a point where all the teams, all the athletes, everything in America that is supposed to win, when it wins, it's not, we don't celebrate it. We right. just say, you did what you're supposed to. Right. I'm glad you did. And when you don't, we say, what the hell happened? And then the third category is the 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 sports in which there's no expectations. And when those people lose, we don't care. And when they win, that's what makes us feel alive. So that brings me to my point that yes. I think the U.S. winning the Gold Cup over Mexico, which we've won six other Gold Cups. I think this was our seventh. But we sent our B and C guys. Like, we sent our very young team. Mexico had close to what their best team could be. Mm-hmm. We were not supposed to win this game at all. We weren't even supposed to be close. And it, it was very much an underdog story. And we beat Mexico. And I, it's not like everybody in this country was watching that. I, I understand that. It's not like this was like, a you know, people were in the streets waving their American <laughs> flags and all. I don't – but – one thing I noticed was like there was sort of like a collective like like the people that were watching were like this is sick this is awesome I can't believe we did this, and I think that's why I think that the only way patriotism exists in in watching sports mm-hmm. anymore in this country is with an underdog, mm-hmm. and unfortunately we don't have a lot of underdogs anymore and we have to find the underdogs. I think that you're right. I also think the U.S. men's national team beating Mexico was a particularly great moment for everything coming together for everyone to be able to root for them because Mexican fans have done nothing to endear themselves, which is a blanket statement. I'm sure there are many wonderful Mexican (laughs) fans. But, like, when you go to a game and they're chanting homophobic slurs, you're like... Not and that's arguably for this. that's arguably not even the worst thing to do. In fact, right. I would argue it's not the worst thing because throwing bags of piss at yeah. players. Like <laughs> it's it's really yeah. bad. And so I think a win like that can make you feel like okay, you know, America's pretty messed up, but at least fans aren't doing this yeah. at this game. And yeah. I, and I think that part of the problem is, you know, with what the flag has come to represent to so many people being so different, um, it. I think there's no one culture anymore, right? Like there used yes. to be like, the, we, you were talking about the 1996 Olympics. It used to be that there was sort of one before the internet fractured where yeah. you get your news or what you look at. There used to be sort of one general place or several general places in the There were still word, multiple in, cultures, but we all kind of came together to like weave this one. Yeah. And the problem mm, with that one was that thing. it was very yeah. white and very male. Yes. And so I think the breaking down of it has been good in a lot of ways. But I think it also means that you've got these fringe freakos saying all this stuff that goes into the mainstream so that when yeah. something happens, there is no the facts get so mixed up with the the lies that you can have one person just tweeting anything and then that that you know one person gets amplified as much as anyone who's saying the truth gets amplified and all of a sudden everybody's talking to each other about all these different things and so Simone Biles not being able to compete becomes like a hot button political issue yes when it's like sorry she had vertigo I don't know what to tell you and so it makes it hard for people to say like well you know let's get behind her anyway instead they're like she it you know it's like it becomes this whole whether you're on what whatever whichever direction you're coming at it from yeah there is a way to say oh, you're wrong let's not root for this person who right. was wearing the flag of my country right and i guess my question is because i i'm too stupid to believe that maybe someday <laughs> things can get better things can get better is your you, question how can things do, get no, better? No, not even how. Do you think that that, or, or is it done? Is, is this what uh, international sports are going to be for America moving forward? Is just this, that like, there's going to be, no matter what team exists, there's going to be like, I don't know. There's going to be one guy, like even even the, the U.S. soccer team, like we go on a World Cup run, say, 
and we're in the final, the semifinals of the World Cup, and then like there's some faction of people that are like Christian Pulisic said this once upon a time. So like I'm I'm done with this team, and then like that or I don't know, not even said like just just something like I don't like his face or I like it, there's there, there's become it has become something like cause Simone Biles to my knowledge not super political like I understand the uh, uh um you know the the U.S. women's soccer team they are they are very they're activists Megan Rapinoe yeah. is not shy about her beliefs on things right. so you could rub some people the wrong way so if someone's like I disagree with what she's saying you know like whether whether where you fall in the political spectrum like I kind of understand how you arrive at the point where you're like I would want to see her fail like that that tracks in my brain Simone Biles like even if it's not where your brain would go you understand the logic it, it tracks of what I understand it, how you, you got there. there the Simone Biles situation it doesn't really track because like in my not to my knowledge Simone Biles is not particularly you know in your face with stuff um but i don't but as i said it's not even that because it's like the nba guys that uh you know like again you could say that they're whatever but like i think unfortunately sorry no, no that's what i mean yeah. it's like it it is it is seeped into everything and um i wish i you know this is not a novel this is not a new <laughs> i'm, no, I'm I not do. the first I, one to I, say this i know but it's very frustrating charlotte because i just i i i, I felt i felt it watching the gold cup yeah. For a moment in time, I was like, we, we could do this. We can do this as a country. We can, we, we can I know, come together. I, I do miss that. I really yeah. used to, I used to feel a whole lot of pride um, watching yeah. our athletes in the Olympics. And I feel pride for them individually, but way less so in terms, like, I just think nationalism in general is a little creepy now, but, you know, that's, that's sort of where yeah. I come at it from, but, um, which is not where everybody does, but I have two things. I have a solution, Mark. What? Well, first of all, I think that some of the, you know, people not being particularly political, I think, unfortunately, like racism is the that's answer a thing. lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, and so my answer to having, how do we like get people back on track? How do we stop this? Is that we just, we get rid of all internet that isn't podcasts yes. that we speak on that yeah the, all internet the i'm the only one that's allowed to use we it. are the <laughs> only ones allowed to be or there's a government mandate that you can only be on the internet one hour a day yeah and you can definitely. only tweet <laughs> four words that's definitely a great idea i mean come on like that i don't see any other way that we pull this I don't, back I don't know how anybody the train has left the, yeah. the battleship it's a bummer because I, I i don't even because th- I really don't think it's all political stuff. I think it's just like I think for some of the NBA stuff, it's just it's because for me, I, I I don't I don't pay that much attention to what guys tweeted what or said right. what or whatever. And I, I for me, it was just like I don't love Kevin Durant that much as a bad like I I don't love that he joined the Warriors. I'm still not over that that he tried right. to ruin the NBA and join. It. No, we know. <laughs> he, he we, we've 3-1. heard. <laughs> he was up three one and blows the lead and then joins right. a 73 win team. What a loser! But now he's building a super team in Brooklyn. So now he's the face of Team USA basketball and like I, I'm gonna cheer for him. I want him to win. But like yeah, there is a small part of me. And I think there's like stuff like that that factors into well, it. And I, I I hate all of that because it should just be. That to me is what you were saying about the underdog versus not the underdog yes. is that it's entitlement is that a lot of yes. these sports come with entitlement or expectation and the only way to have most people love you is to be as unentitled as possible and never have won anything yes. before which is why we somehow have to keep ourselves as bad as possible for as long for, as possible yeah, I, I really i really do think that's ultimately what it is, is i that, think so i mean is, any success with success comes expectation and comes people not liking you because you're successful yes. and it you know it's just sort of like this constant and even even when it's your country at the olympics apparently the thing that we thought was maybe impermeable to that we're still like oh u.s gymnastics yeah. didn't win gold okay yeah. instead of being like wow silver well done you yeah. know China has more gold medals than us right now, Charlotte. And I, I remember a time where this was a national crisis, where Congress was getting together and th- in the, halfway through the Olympics and saying, we have to do, I, you know. I was like. <laughs> did that happen? I, did you? No, it happened. I remember. Well, um, the, the way that, the thing that and, I make myself yeah. feel better about that is China has a bajillion more people than we do. No, that's not okay. The, the, so we're the underdogs. Maybe that's it. It's like we go. have to lose this Olympics and gold medals yes. to China. And, and then, then next we'll time come back we have to come back stronger. Ever. Yeah, it sucks because I, I think we're a nation of uh, both front runners and uh, people who love an underdog story. And how do you have both? You know what I mean? How can a team be both a front? Like, we want to cheer for winners, but we also want to cheer for underdogs. So that's really all that's left now is like an underdog story that works. 
which is why even even the people that that uh you know live in this country that uh, are they they turn their back on the idea of patriotism and mm -hmm. the, the the idea that you brought up earlier that like patriotism in general seems kind of weird to nationalism the this this idea of like and we're I'm not, superior. Not, no, no no i know i know right you're not you, you, but, but i don't are, hate america i am i am patriotic in sure. the ways that it feels supportive to be there are people uh that the, there are certainly american citizens that uh are are on the extreme uh, of that I idea that totally. they are, they are very much like the, the idea of countries in and of itself is stupid this is all stupid even I feel in my mind, even those people have to look at, at us beating Russia in, in the Olympics back in the day, the miracle on ice, and say that's pretty sick. That's pretty, yeah, that was a pretty sick moment. Those people probably loved Karl Marx. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so right, that's right. where your argument falls apart. <laughs> but I mean, like, because like, cause those moments where the underdog prevails, no matter, I, that's what I mean. It's like I know, the, 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 I know. there are these moments that, like, no matter what your ideology is, your it politics, hits you, it's visceral. Your it's thoughts like on the a, team, it's, it's just like, like a chemical response in your body where you're like, that. Rule. That was sick. That, was that is sick. so sick, and I'm so glad we won. I'm so glad I live in this country. We need not more. That, that was yeah, sick. That was moments. sick. And I, f I, I really like. As I'm thinking about it, I really feel like the men's soccer team might be it, because like the men's soccer team, uh, the, the, the the straddles that balance of of good enough to theoretically, theoretically, beat anybody on any given night. Theoretically, hmm. we could beat Brazil okay. if if the stars align. We could play. You could talk yourself into it as a as a United States soccer fan. Okay. But at the same time, no one's expecting us to beat Brazil, right? Right. And that is a perfect sweet spot to where like maybe that's the last hope we have. That's so true. Maybe that's it. Or it's like one of the the. I, I feel like we've been losing a lot of sprinting uh, medals too lately. I, I remember, know, but Sydney McLaughlin in the hurdles. Yeah, that was sick. That, that sort of sick. made up. She beat her own world record. Yeah, that's a good point. I love her. She's also, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or if this will make me a bad woman. She is one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. It's like staring at the sun. I'm like, anyway. Um, there I don't know. I had, I had that thought, and uh, I, I don't even know what, what, the, what the solution is. I guess it, it sometimes you just throw your hands up and you say, I don't know. If it the is world what it is. But I, but I like no talking about it because it makes you think about Yeah. The why we talk about sports at all. Yeah. Which is that it connects to all of these things, even. You know another thing I was thinking too that might help. Uh, what? Are for having red, white, and blue, uh, timeless colors. You know, the, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think we have the best flag. If we're being honest, like our flag could be cooler. But oh, uh, for sure, it is time colors, for a rebrand. America needs a rebrand. We just need a rebrand more than anything. <laughs> the the colors are sick. We have a great color scheme. Red, Love white, the color blue. scheme. But. I feel like our uniforms across the board and just about every sport. I agree. We could use some work. I don't we like the track ones this year. The track ones I didn't good. love the gymnastics ones. The basketball uniforms, the gradient, the, the blue, oh, that's kind of like, ugh. ugh. It's not good. Maybe Ombre that's was it. so 2000. 14. Maybe that's maybe it's literally that. Just do a nostalgia play and bring back like the USA, the Dream Team USA basketball logo. Yeah, those were sick. I don't know <laughs> why we ever stopped back. doing that. Like what every it feels get, like every uniform is like. <laughs> seven years behind in fashion yeah. and then what it really needs to be is just retro make everything retro, everything retro all the time if, they never change if at the 2024 olympics the united states outfits the every olympian and whatever was worn in 92 and 96 that's what that's what like no done. matter the sport everyone's back in beautiful everyone's Boom. back in They're like done we fixed it there see mark we fixed it now uh, i want to talk about something that's not important at all okay which is this entire week outside of the olympics yeah because this is sports media's time to shine this yep. is when my phone is blowing up constantly with trade announcements is, about guys that i didn't even know were still playing basketball i'm looking up in the studio right now we have a lot of tvs in here um not to brag. And, and i see i see <laughs> colin cowherd uh on the television screen doing his radio show right now yeah. and uh this is when colin makes the this is why he makes the big bucks is weeks like this yes. it's like weeks like colin yes. colin takes the los angeles lakers free agent signings and he cracks his knuckles and he says, here's three hours, America. He says... It's unbelievable. I, I saw a report that, that Baker Mayfield in the red zone at practice went over on his passes. This is true, by the way. I did see this. I did see this tweet. <laughs> um, and Colin cracks his knuckles and he's, and he's like... That's my B block. He cracks right there. his knuckles. He you know? puts his hat backwards <laughs> yeah. and he's like, "Let's go." That's my B block. Ready to ride. Uh, but ultimately, <laughs> it means nothing. So, uh, what a. Uh, what what do you think? Uh, I, I guess like NBA free agency does sort of matter, but as you said, like the biggest signing so far are the the, the biggest news 
I guess, I don't know, the Lakers signing everybody, but as, in terms of like individual players mm -hmm. and, and how good they are and the money they're commanding, it's basically like Chris Paul went back to the Suns. Right. We're waiting on Kawhi Leonard. He's probably going to stay with the Clippers. Maybe he doesn't, and that would make it fun. But for the most part, there's not a ton of shaking up happening. There's not. No, and but there's a lot of guys where you're like, okay. Yeah, a lot like of okay. Like Kyle Lowry of, to the Heat. You're like, cool. Oh, that's something that happened. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Duncan Robinson re-signed mm -hmm. with the Heat. I was excited about that because he is Nescac's own. Okay, I also I also have a bone to pick. There isn't a there's a Twitter account out mm -hmm. there called Hockey in the CAC, which is yep. about Nescac Seems hockey. Seems like a euphemism. Nescac, <laughs> well, Nescac is the New England Small College Athletic Conference, I believe. That yeah. Colby College, where I went, plays in, could not be less relevant. And yeah. I say, like, it does not matter on the national stage at all. And this account tweets at me regularly being like, well, maybe if you promoted the NESCAC more. Ooh. And I'm like, I am doing more for the NESCAC yep. than almost anybody almost. in national sports media. I say almost because I'm not keeping tabs on everybody. Yeah. I can't read the Internet. And I just want to say, get off my back. We're not going to. Yeah. We're, I'm doing my best, and do, we'll dip in every once in a while. Do they have hockey in the next? I don't know why for, I started. I don't know why I went on that rant. What do they actually have about? hockey? Yes. I, I, I thought I thought like it was a. a All of our hockey players trip. at Colby were 27 years old, mm -hmm. and they were pre-med. Mm -hmm. That checks out. <laughs> that's, that's just <laughs> how it was. <laughs> and they were Canadian. How about that? And a lot of them were that? lovely guys. Uh, so you, you feel like that, that's that's interesting. That's Cactus, what were uh, we talking about? Why did you, I just you brought bring up Duncan up? Robinson? At Williams oh, College right. He went to Williams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. I love Dun Duncan. Uh, and he's your pal. Yeah. Duncan's everybody's pal. Let's like Duncan's one of those guys that did everybody claims. He, everybody claims ownership of Duncan because he's, he's just like he allows it to happen. He's like too nice of a guy. I'm not I, I'm not claiming ownership. I'm just saying. No, I don't, it, mean, when, I don't mean I, I mean that that. Uh, when anything happens with him, people I know send me pictures of North Face that's jackets. I'm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like every and and if if anything yeah. happens with Duncan, people text me too. Right. And if and people text Michigan fans and people text. Right, right, <laughs> right, he, right. He he he. Uh, he's a guy that he's got a, a wide reach. Yes, yes. Okay. He's he's played it smart where he's got a lot of people that uh that are rooting for the guy. He signed he yeah he signed a ninety million dollar contract. How about that? Yeah, good for him. Uh, what else happened? I mean, rest to the Lakers. We rest care. to the Lakers. Um. We we I I guess that's uh, something that people that, that that's the big news in terms the, the Lakers all the moves the Lakers made are the big news but I'm I'm talking like individual players this this class is kind of I don't know it, it hasn't really moved the needle for me no I guess Kawhi Leonard is the one guy that can change that Kawhi Leonard could just say he wants to go to the Knicks where's he gonna go he's gonna stay in Los Angeles but make a take <laughs> where he goes somewhere you know what I think uh, my dark horse is the Indiana Pacers. <laughs> I really believe once he, I think he's going to live in Brownsburg. I think he's going <laughs> to, he's going to be driving by my old house. Yeah. He's going to see the three basketball hoops in the backyard. And he's going to say, this is a place that takes basketball seriously. This, this yeah. is it for this me. It. <laughs> he would actually, I could see Kawhi like loving living by a cornfield. <laughs> no. I think he would get really into that. Anyway. Yeah. There wasn't anything that really sort of, the one thing that I do take away from this is that everybody talks about free agency in terms of like, who's going where as though, as those that this were three three x three basketball. Yeah. Because it's like, well, now you know you've got Russ, AD, and LeBron, yes. and then they're like, you've got, and I'm like, it it basketball. The way people talk about basketball now is way more like the way people talk about a school play, where they're like, <laughs> Travis, Jimmy, and Shelby got the leads. Yeah. Huge huge for their families this is going to change everything then there's the supporting cast which is pretty strong but you know yeah. it all comes down to how these three interact right. with each other right and it's not a team sport and there are five people on a court at once it's like basketball uh, talking about basketball you just you talk yourself in circles because uh it, it, it is absolutely insane where you, you'd say the, the, the reason we, we do that is because uh it does start at the top. Your best player is you're kind of limited by right. how good your best player is in basketball. Even though it's a team game, if your best player is not at a certain caliber, you're probably not going to win the NBA title, right? So you have to get one of these top 
10 to 15 guys. You need a Probably lead. less than I, that. I, I get it. You need guys. a main character. Right. So you have to get one of those guys. At the same time, every every single year, without fail, something happens in the NBA Finals. Uh, not even one isolated moment, but like there's always guys that step up and, and are huge. There's always a Bobby Portis, a Pat Connaughton, guys like that. that Nobody like, had them on their yes. like main playbill in the beginning of the year when they were talking about all this. Right. So it just feels stupid that we spend all this energy on it without... To me, an interesting conversation would be like who's the who's going to be the dark horse like who's going to come out of the woodwork and you just pick random names and see if you're right 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 that's that's <laughs> i mean you, you you're you're onto something you might as well do Should that. We do that yeah you might as well do that because uh no i, I was I, I mean like you you you, you when, when you're thinking about title contenders you do look at the top and mm -hmm. then once once the top is checked you look at the supporting cast um so it, it, like which one is more important i don't know uh the, I, I guess the best players are more important but if you have a, a team that's top heavy that only has like two good players and the rest of them suck that's also a problem so like as it does turn out as it turns out the whole team does matter <laughs> then you do the same thing with like the strategy itself charlotte where you're like the 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 most important thing this team needs is three-point shooting then you load up on three-point shooting suddenly you're the james harden era houston rockets and it's like this team can't do anything else right. and <laughs> what they really need is this and the and you just jump all over the place and the whole point is all of this is stupid because it's it's just all stupid well it's and we also don't know. and you got to see what the final product looks like right yeah. but the way people talk about it is as though the big three or whatever the best players it's yeah. just like a done deal that they're going to work together and i actually think that russ on the lakers i think that could be a wild implosion like it's horrible. i think all it's of a that, horrible it's signing. gonna go yeah. very this is very, very bad. badly I'm, I'm very much in the camp that this isn't the lakers are not going to be good next year no i they're don't not think winning they the are title. yeah they, no and so it's just funny to watch people be like oh here we go and it's yes. like all right anyway the, but yeah. The, the NFL is also doing a lot with nothing this week mm -hmm. because training camp started. I don't know if you've seen some of the pictures and some of the information that comes out of this. My favorite part of NFL of the NFL coming back is when team reporters go to practices and tweet out the NFL is the most is the funniest league because it takes itself the most seriously, yes. but it is also just inherently hilarious. Like and we'll get uh, the, Basically, there's a picture of Justin Herbert with a T-shirt tan that went viral as like a part of. What does media. this mean? What does this mean? This what, means. What does this tell us? Is can, can he be a friend? Are you handing? Look at that! Like, are you kidding me? Is that your franchise guy? I don't know. So to me, this says two things. It says that he takes it so seriously that he was in his backyard with a T-shirt on throwing every day, and he doesn't care about looks. He doesn't care about yep. being vain. He is just out there. It also says that maybe someone should um, get him a spray tan? Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, this uh, this is your franchise guy because this is a guy who only cares about one thing. Oh, football. football. Or maybe he was just going to the beach a lot and wearing a t-shirt to the beach because he thought he looked a little fat and he was just like insecure. And he's not, And he's not your <laughs> franchise guy because he has no confidence in himself to just peel the shirt when you're outside, Justin. Not a franchise guy. <laughs> wow, see, this is debate. It's this is over. healthy debate. This is what you want from a Do you like training camp season? Do you find this stuff uh, to be interesting? I, I tr the, the idea of NFL training camps in general is kind of preposterous to me that they send these guys to uh, – th th this is still going on, right? Like maybe this is an antiquated thing that they've done away with. But um, my understanding is there a lot of teams still are going to like small towns – like two hours away from where their city is. Yeah. And they, they sleep in bunk beds and they do the whole deal of, uh, but then the, also you turn around and you turn on your TV and this week's the hall of fame game. Right. And like, we, we need to like not be distracted, but also let's all go to Canton and play a, a football game after like three days of practice right. and try to piece that together on national television. And then like all of you that are getting reps that are trying to make the team. Now you're on national TV. Good luck. Yes. <laughs> The whole thing is kind of bizarre to me. I love training camp because I love the funny extra things that come out of it. The The reason that I love the NFL so much is because it can be the goofiest league accidentally. Like the, the things that happen and, you know, people take one pass. Like Justin Fields has a good practice and they're like, well, that's it. Bears are winning the yeah. Super Bowl. And I just love Not even a practice, one throw. One like throw. one, like he hands it off right and then the way he carries out the fake after the handoff, you're like, that's that's good. They're that's like, good I stuff mean, right there. That's Lombardi. <laughs> there he is. Um, so I love it because I love the little, the little missives that come in and, and I love how important it makes 
the reporters feel. And I don't mean that I don't I'm not being condescending or like joking when I say this. Like, I think the best thing when you're on the ground as a reporter is yeah. to find something sort of silly or funny and be like, check this out and yeah. send it and have people love it because it is funny and silly. And so that's where it's like boots but on the I ground is very important. I'm going to I'm going to call out the reporters to do this. I don't think they think it's funny or silly. Like, I think they think I think like the people that are like. <laughs> Justin I'm the only Fields, one who goes there like, specifically for the funny and silly things. I think the people that tweet out, Justin Fields just overthrew a deep ball and walked to the sideline and said, dang, I got to be better. <laughs> See, like, Send tweet. Even- like, I think the guy who tweets that stuff, like, generally thinks he's like, I got great perspective. Here. Yeah, I think, no, like, people are going to so love, true. you know, uh, like, you're right. <laughs> and every one of us reading, it's like, okay, thank you. And then the, te- the teams put out videos of, uh, I saw a video, uh, Trey Lance yeah. threw a pass. He literally yeah, threw a pass. he threw a pass. He threw a pass that if you are much less starting in the NFL, like just, if you are on an NFL, con- uh, uh, if you have an NFL contract, yeah. you're on a roster yeah. as a quarterback, yeah. you should be able to complete this pass. <laughs> and he throw- and it's like, here's something that happened. And it's like, oh my God, Trey Lance, what does this mean? What does this mean about Trey See, Lance? I think my problem, Mark, is that I would go to one of these things and I would see... Justin Herbert overthrow and go to the sideline and say dang and tweet it out because I thought that's like very yeah. funny. Yeah. I don't think people do and that. I, don't, I think they take it very seriously. I think they take it very seriously. I think they're like Dak Prescott finished 17th and the full the full the, every Dallas Cowboy just lined up for a sprint and Dak Prescott finished 17th and he said I, I gotta be better. I gotta be the top 10 for sure if I'm gonna be the leader of this team. Sin tweet. <laughs> Like, God, like, training oh, camp's okay, great. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, totally. Um, is there anything that, like... Well, why, there... don't, why don't we do our list? Because uh, th- th- this will be... I don't want to uh, step over anything you're talk- you, you want to okay, talk okay, about here. Okay. Because uh, I-, I think we can just do it this way, and we can spend some time fleshing them out. Um, great. Uh, what we wanted to do this week is talk about the top five things that happened this, this past week that are... S- I-, I framed it this way. Things that when I saw them, when I saw the news... I thought, wow, this is a pretty big deal. This is important. And then I had to remind myself, no, it's not. This does not matter. This is a, th- this is, this is irrelevant. None of this actually matters. But I, I get sucked into the trap, Charlotte. I, I see guys, I see the headline. I, okay. Justin fr- Fields said, dang, I overthrow. Fr- and I was like, oh, oh, what, 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 what does it mean? <laughs> I framed my list a little bit more as like, I saw these and chuckled a little bit mm-hmm. and first and thought, you know what? Let's just do Go it. Go ahead. Five things that happened this week that five don't that actually happen. matter. Just five things five that happened. Hap- top five things that happened this week. Top five things that happened. Go ahead. Uh, all right. Number five. Kelly Olenek went from the Rockets to the Pistons for a three-year, $37 million deal. Oh. Okay. Cool. That happened. <laughs> so is that too much? The reason I... this is on my list is because, and it's number five, is because I could see if you're a Pistons fan and you just got... Cade Cunningham. Yeah. And you've got a guy who people who people know his name. Yeah. And you're like, oh, maybe this is the start of something. Like you could get excited about that. I see where that could matter. Yeah. But I also just have always thought that Kelly Olenek was a hilarious person, just like the way he like look at that. Like yeah. taking him seriously is always funny to me. And so I was sort of like I was looking down the free agency tracker and I was like, what to me is the funniest trade that I'd be like rockets to pistons. Okay. Yeah. So that's why it's there. So yeah. I do. Do you think that's an overpay Kelly Olenek there? Cause that, that's the other thing. If you're going to talk about signings that happen, yeah. you have to say whether it's an overpay or whether it's a great deal. Oh, overpay, one team fleece sure. the, fleece the other team or the player fleece the organization or something. The rockets I, got screwed. The rockets are idiots. What was he? He got 37 million for three years, for three years for the, the pistons. Yeah. He's on the pistons now. Yeah. Right? I wouldn't. I would. If I he's he's worth thirty five. I don't think thirty seven. Yeah, exactly. What I, I think said. It's an overpay, for sure. I, me, so the basketball contract time. genius. <laughs> How many people understand? Once in a while, I'm right. I I really think there. I was about to say like eight. <laughs> I think there are fewer than that. I think it might be zero. I think there might be zero people that actually understand NBA contracts in the market and like what. Yes. Yeah, I think like the GMs that do it don't even really know. I no. think they, they come up with their own proprietary algorithm, and the algorithm is just like points plus rebounds <laughs> divided by right. the age of the player. <laughs> but I think I think the biggest form of gatekeeping of people in sports is 
guys pretending that they get the math yeah. involved and whether it was a good idea or not and telling their girlfriends and their girlfriends being smart enough to realize, I don't know what you're talking about, but the guy is too much of an asshole to realize yeah. that he doesn't know what he's talking about. And that's where the like men and women sports. That's one thing. Um, when I was growing up, uh, I, I, I guess this makes me unique. I didn't think it made me unique, Charlotte. Uh, I liked watching sports because I liked the sports. I liked the athletes. I liked watching Michael Jordan play basketball. Mm. What I did not necessarily have an interest in was what's Michael contract or what's Michael Jordan's contract situation? How much cap space do the Bulls have? Can they make some moves in the off season to to bolster? Can they give Jordan more help for? Right. The Bulls are going to have to defend the title. How are they going to go about that? I didn't care. I turned on the TV. I wanted to see Jordan do sick shit on a basketball court. Um, and so as I got older and then, like, I get into uh, uh, high school, college, whatever, and I start consuming more media because, mm -hmm. like, you could start, I, you know, I never, like, even when I was growing up, I never read articles or anything like that. I as you start, read. As you start reading s s people's takes on sports, uh -huh. um, there are a lot of people that understood the contracts, I thought. And right. I, it blew my mind, Charlotte, that these, these people were like, one thing the Rockets are going to be looking to do in this offseason is flip these assets. And all, and they started talking about it that way. And I was like, oh, my God, these guys are geniuses. Yeah. Like, how do you know all this? How does anybody know all this? Like, yeah. you, you, were you studying this? Well, I was, I was, my dumbass was trying to be Michael Jordan. You were trying to be Jerry Krause. Yeah. Wow. Oh. This is ge You're a genius. And then I got a little older, Charlotte, and I realized all of those people, literally every single one of them are full of shit. They don't know anything. It took <laughs> every me single one of those yes. people that are like, yes. here are some good assets. What, what this GM did was good. What this GM did. No, you don't know. None of, none of us know. The, the GMs don't even know. The most freeing thing that ever happened to me in my career was realizing that if I didn't understand something, it wasn't my fault, and nobody else probably yeah. did either. <laughs> no one else did either. I really think the GMs in the NBA, when they sign deals, uh, they hang up the phone, then they turn and they look at whoever's in the room with them. You're like, oh, that's not too bad, right? That's not too much. That's probably like, that's we, probably fair, right? That, that's fair, right? I think it's fair. I mean, yeah, I think so. I just, you know, if it's not, I didn't say it was. And then the other person doesn't say a word. And you're like, because because the thing is, is that, and then they just start talking for 20 minutes, and the other person's like, okay, Dan, um, all right, good, good, good. Enough about that. Uh, we we I that, that's that's a rant that I that, just prepare yourself, Charlie. I'll do a rant about. NBA contracts maybe on the maybe uh, on this actual episode again at some point but yeah uh, I'm sure there will be an opportunity what's your number five I definitely have <laughs> I'll, I'll drop it <laughs> all right what's your number five <laughs> number five on my list is uh Trevor Lawrence threw a pass to Tim Tebow <laughs> I saw this I lost my mind and then I realized this doesn't matter and this is irrelevant this is stupid but there's a video of Trevor Lawrence there he is. Oh Beautiful. my God, Trevor! Jaguars uniform. You know what? I have that video pulled up, and I just didn't watch it yet. Um, let me. What does it mean, Charlotte? I, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a give it a look, and um, yeah. Nope, it's, maybe I don't have yeah, it pulled it's, up. It's uh, it's a pretty again. It's one of those training camp. It's a pretty standard. Uh, I mean, what did Tebow catch it? That's that's not the point. It, it has nothing to do. With it. It's the the fact that Tim Tebow. It, it, this is something we have talked about a lot. Uh, both both you and I and and the world at large. That yeah. Tim Tebow is is now playing tight end for the the Jacksonville Jaguars. I knew it was coming. Um, I had seen the photoshops that everyone. Yeah. The internet was quick to. Right. Here's what Tim Tebow might look like with a Jaguars helmet in his hand. Right. Like oh wow okay. I see this, uh, but then to see it live in person, to okay, see so Tim Tebow's actually taking reps. My question to you is how many people tweeted this, like, the last time Tebow was in the NFL, Trevor Lawrence mm -hmm. was in seventh grade going to Here, Shelley yep. Silverstein's bat mitzvah. <laughs> Shelley Silverstein. I don't think Trevor Lawrence knew a lot of Jewish people growing up. I'm going to so go Shel out Silverstein's on Silverstein's daughter. Shelley Silverstein. <laughs> She a poet too. Yeah, yeah. She wrote where the sidewalk <laughs> continues. Um, anyway, y you know, it, it always comes down to that. It's like when Tim Tebow was last in the NFL. Now sixteen. <laughs> yep. Now that's what I call music. Here's how time works. <laughs> uh, so this thing that happened five years ago. Five years ago, this it other happened. thing happened. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so that's number five on my list. Is something I saw this. I said, "Wow, that's something." And then five seconds later, I was like. That actually, it's not. It's nothing it's at all. Nothing. That means nothing. Nothing at all. So. Well, that's how I felt about my number four, which is that on Monday, Zach Wilson, the quarterback for the New York Jets, mm -hmm. turned 22, and Tom Brady, the quarterback for the Buccaneers, turned 44. Wow. That's... And that was a thing that at first I was like, huh, those numbers, if you add up Zach's age, that's Tom's age. 
had a whole conversation with myself about, well, I guess Tom could be Zach's dad technically. And then I was like, cool. Doesn't does it, matter. How, does it matter? No. No. But That's doesn't it. he, I, every time I see him, he's a kid from the 90s yeah. villain the from the sports movie. Yeah. Do, do, how much of it is, how, how much of it is uh, his fault? How much is he to blame? Like, should, should I feel? You think so? Dude. Okay, look at his well, haircut, make your case. Look okay. at his look at his headband. Look at his I mean, he can't do anything about his face. Right. But he hasn't said anything to make me think he's like <laughs> But he hasn't tried. Fun. He hasn't tried to do anything <laughs> about his face. He could try uh, something. <laughs> I get a lot of TikTok and Instagram algorithms directing me to plastic surgeons. So, I'm just saying, no, I'm kidding. I mean, I do get those. I'm kidding about Zach. <laughs> I just mean like he carries himself that way. Okay. No, I, I, I was curious because, like, you just, some people. You, I don't know why I just got so defensive. I don't know. Well, I, I, you know, maybe the guy's just like, in he's his mind. He's probably a nice guy. In know? his mind, he's like, I just am, you know? Like, I just woke up and, like, threw on this shirt and came to practice. And now everyone's telling me that I look like, you know, I'm I'm a bully or, like, I look like I'm 12 years old. Like, I can't help that. I, I would, know. And now I would that love I think to look of like it. Jason Momoa, too, but I don't. <laughs> This, this is who I am. People, Accept me for who I am. People probably look at me and they're like, oh, wow. She looks yeah. like the girl who w- works at a bookstore in Brooklyn because she wasn't cool enough to work at the cool bar. <laughs> and I'd be like, suck it. Are they yeah. hiring? Uh, yeah, right? Anyone? Uh, you're right. The headband does him no favors. Also, he's a little cocky. Like, not, not in a bad way or maybe in a bad way. I don't know. It depends on your perspective. I don't know. Sometimes it it's confidence. What's people? the difference between <laughs> confidence and being cocky? I don't know. But, uh, you know, he's not exactly a mild mannered guy on the football field, so No. Yeah. I was just I was just curious. I wanted yeah. to hear you make the case. You wanted um, to hear me lose my shit. <laughs> would you rather have two Zach Wilsons or one Tom Brady? I would rather have one Tom Brady. It's a great question in terms of if you're starting a franchise. I was about to say I would rather have a million tiny ducks. But <laughs> <laughs> uh Here's <laughs> if you're starting a franchise, I'd rather have two Zach Wilsons. Well, okay. If you're starting, if because uh, if one doesn't work for out for this maybe. season, you can have Tom Brady with a average high school quarterback as his backup mm-hmm. from the state of Indiana, like me, like me in high school. Mark Ti- high school Mark Titus is Tom Brady's NFL okay. backup. <laughs> or you can have I'd Zach. I'm so <laughs> worried about you. <laughs> well, I'm the backup. I'm not gonna play, but maybe I have to. That's you don't what know. I mean. That's, that's the whole question. It's Tom Brady's old. You don't know. Or would you rather have Zach Wilson with Zach Wilson as the backup? That if Zach Wilson, God forbid, something happens to him and he blows his knee out, that's okay because we have another. We have a clone. Are they on the Jets or the Bucks? (laughs) They're on. Because that shit matters. Great question. They are on the Indianapolis Colts. I was just going to say they're on the Colts. Yeah, they're on the Colts. In that case, I'd rather have two Zachs. I think so. Because someone goes wrong with the Colts. in In this hypothetical... If, if something goes wrong with Brady and I come in, I'm the hometown kid now, Charlotte. I'm from Indianapolis area. Oh, now are you so offended now I'm for the that Colts. I didn't pick you? Oh, my God. You don't Mark, think... If, you could be a backup NFL quarterback. Charlotte, if you don't think the local Indianapolis community would rally around me, high school me, getting thrown no. in, like Henry Rowan Gardner, and suddenly I have to sling the pigskin for the Wait, Colts. Wait, you're in high school in this yeah. scenario? Yeah. I'm oh, 17 years old. I thought you were old. 34 in this scenario. No, I'm 17 years old. It's me when high school when I was playing football so is tom brady also younger no he's 44 <laughs> charlotte <laughs> okay then i would pick it's a very straightforward then i would pick tom brady and mark titus any day are you kidding me tom brady and mark titus <laughs> over zach with tom brady and mark titus are my two most mentioned names on on twitter okay like come on zach wilson <laughs> jesus don't don't do that to me who's your what's your number four? Oh man uh, number four on my list uh, is is also a quarterback that we uh, we don't talk about him a lot on here, but uh, his name's come up a time or two. Um, I have Aaron Rodgers looks happy. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers looks happy at training camp. Look oh, at him. Oh God, Aaron Rodgers looks like he just got off a boat from a trip where he did a ton of ayahuasca. Here, here's the question: As I'm looking at this picture, is Aaron Rodgers handsome? I would have said yes before, but <laughs> before I am saw this questioning <laughs> everything I know. Hold on, let me let me just. He's got to be this handsome, is, Charlotte. If he's is... not handsome, what 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 chance do no, any of us handsome. have? No, he's handsome. He's okay. handsome. He's handsome. But I am. Is he doing? He is... looks like he looks like someone, and it's he looks like uh, John Hamm 
when he in Mad Men when he goes on his finding himself drug oh, journey. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also he looks like someone from Lost. Like he has that two thousands yeah. Lost vibe, but he also looks like the guy who works in the health food store and tells you where the good new kombucha is, and you don't trust him, so you get the other kind. Yeah. What What is this guy's number one hobby? This guy, this picture we're looking at right here, like yoga, slacklining. Like slack line, <laughs> slack <lining. laughs> he just goes that to the dude park. Can slackline till the cows come home. <laughs> He's a slack line. He also still is a hacky sack. <laughs> He's definitely a hacky sack guy. Uh, I think Aaron Rodgers is doing a handsome heat check. This is a thing that actors yeah. do from time to time. Yep. Brad Pitt's famous for it. Of just like I'm gonna grow a mullet. I'm gonna letting himself go. Yeah, I'm just gonna how... let myself go and, and is watch that what, what happens they call next. That, I, I just check? made that up, but yeah, I think that's what it is. It's a that's handsome like me heat every check. day. I'm like, how yeah. bad can I look and yeah. still and, and still get away with it because I'm the quarterback of the Packers and I'm Which the is something I say MVP. to myself every day because <laughs> I am the quarterback of the Packers. How bad can I look? How cool are uh, red jerseys, by the way, for quarterbacks in training camp? Sick. What They're a great so idea. Sick. Wouldn't that be sweet to have that in real life? That like, like a don't touch me or like I'm special thing? Oh, yeah. Could... It's like a... They're like the equivalent of bodyguards. Yeah, kind of. of. Like, yeah. Of... No, you know what those are? Those are black SUVs. Oh, yeah. In real life, they're... Oh, yes, because when you're in a black SUV getting driven somewhere, which hasn't happened to me terribly often, but every time it has, I'm like, I am the king of the world. I love capitalism. All of you small (laughs) people out there. And then you look at Aaron Rodgers in a red jersey, and he is in that space. He's like, king of the world. I love capitalism. No one can touch me. That's great. That's a great point. That When you're in a black SUV, and you pull up... Like, if you pull up to a a restaurant, I guess Uber's kind of ruined this, because you can do, like, Uber black now, but... I mean, in general, it still if, counts. If you pull up to a restaurant counts. and you get out of like a black SUV, especially one that's got like the that sticker of on the back that's like the the ID of the car, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Like the, the the limo services will like tag each of their cars. Like aviation or, services. Yeah, and it's just like it's got it's the, like these are cars, the serial right? number or whatever. Yeah. You roll up in those, the windows are tinted, and you get out and you, you like kind of put your hand over your head like oh. this, and you walk into the restaurant. I don't care who you are, like everyone's stepping out of the way, and they're like, "Go ahead, please, sir, right this way." Mark, should we use this as a great opportunity to say that this Friday we're doing a live show? Oh yeah, yeah, we should. Because I think we should show up at that live show <laughs> well, in black see. SUVs and film the entrance, and we'll be like, "Please, no pictures, no pictures," <laughs> um, and that would be, <laughs> Everybody. and everyone would be like. Charlotte we are doing Mark. a live show. We, 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 are, we are nailing down the location. We should do it at, like, Applebee's, and that would, that would be hilarious. <laughs> we pull up in a black Bees. SUV at Applebee's. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that please, is please. That, for the people. <laughs> for the people. No, yeah, we're doing a live show um, because we're going to be on the road all fall, yep. and it's going to be really fun. It's going to be at a bar in L.A. on Friday. Yep. We are figuring out where. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't have are, – are there bars in L.A.? I don't know. We'll have to try to no, find one. No, there are, like – Spot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know, this, spot. I know the spot. We're finding yeah. out the spot we're doing it at. Um, but we will tweet it out and Instagram it out and whatever yeah. else we do. Um, Stay and tuned. Yeah, you guys should come if you what's want. What's uh What's Aunt Char's vibe in L. A. Does, does Aunt Char exist in L. A. Or when you come to L. A. Is it? You said it's Hollywood Char. Is that what? Like, the people <laughs> That's are what calling I said. You? That's what. Yeah, I think. I think I go more like. Are you in the scene? If I told you I want to go to West Hollywood and just like have, we're going to take whatever drug people hand us and just like let it rip tonight. No, I'm stay too neurotic four, to you, do you drugs. Do that. No, yeah. we've figured that out before. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Nancy Myers in Hollywood on chart, but like a young Meryl Streep in Hollywood. <laughs> okay. Like I'm not in, but like not in movies. Like my vibe is like, do you see what I'm wearing right now? Yeah. I'm wearing like oatmeal colored pants and like a rust colored jacket. Do you know, what I, like I, I am yeah, not oatmeal, in any yeah. scene. Yes. I'm not. I have never in my life been in a scene. I don't think I will ever be in a scene. Anytime I'm at parties where there is a scene, I think it's very funny and mm-hmm. feel very much like I am not a part of it, okay. even if I pretend. So what? 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 Your? Your? Are you? Do you have like a curious vibe? Are you walking around like the the Walk of Fame and like pointing at, at stars that you recognize and that sort of thing? Or God you just, no! I'm, I find myself far too above okay. the tourist stuff. Okay. If I'm being perfectly honest, but like in L- like when we were we went to dinner at Craig's. Yeah. Known for its celebrities. Yes. And we saw Myers Leonard. Right. Formerly of the Heat. One celebrity we the saw. The one celebrity we saw was Myers Leonard. <laughs> Rest in peace, was- Larry King. By the way, <laughs> he was a, he was a staple at Craig's. Had his uh, booth off to the side. Uh, he was 
spoiler alert, not there. Yeah. On the we went on Friday. Um, Even though so I didn't realize. If you would have come. come like three years earlier, you would have seen Larry King. Instead, you saw Myers Leonard. Wearing <laughs> wearing a flannel shirt with the sleeves cut off. Was he really? Yeah, he was. it was the worst that. shirt I'd ever seen. He was with three women wearing a flannel. He looked like a bad country singer. And I was like, oh, wow. So he's doing great. Uh, anyway, we can go back to our list, but I just thought that that would be a good yeah. time to say. Oh, it is. Come it check is. out our live show. Yeah, I don't remember how we got here. Um, but yeah, come check out our live show. Uh, we were talking about red jerseys. Oh, I was talking about Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers looks happy. He's driving around a, a golf cart that's, that his teammates bought for him. He's, uh, you know, saying the right things and, and all that. And the reason this is not news to me is because as first reported on the People's Sports Podcast, he's still mulling over retirement, Charlotte. Obviously. He's not like... He's, he's happy you know because he's he knows he's got an out. Yes. He's smiling because that, that face right there says to me, these idiots have no idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> these stupid this, idiots. Do you know what it is? This is Matthew McConaughey and True Detective 1 yeah, vibes. Yeah, that face. Yeah. That face, but happy. You're like, I don't trust he's that gone. face for a second. Are you kidding me? <laughs> do you remember the scene? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You remember the scene uh, in, in True Detective when he's talking to the lady in the derogation room, and he just says, "You should kill yourself." With his. When he's when he, he he's like. No, no he, he's <laughs> sitting right next to the lady, and he's like, "When you get to prison, people aren't gonna be take it easy on you. If you get the opportunity, you should consider killing yourself." And then he just walks out of the room. That, no. <gasps> but that has that smile has like <laughs> I'm gonna tell you some crazy shit vibes. <laughs> That's Aaron Rodgers to the Packers front office. <laughs> That's <laughs> awful. Uh, okay, my number three. We've covered this already, but I had to put it up there one more time. Justin Herbert has a t-shirt tan. Mm-hmm. He does. Gained yeah. a lot of traction. Also, the reason this doesn't matter, but it mattered to me, because the person who tweeted this out was like, wow, someone should have told him otherwise. Or like It was like, wow, this looks no. bad in typical NFL fashion. And I was like, no, this is brave. I don't think it's either one. I think it's as you I think you I think you had it right the first time. This is a guy that just wants to play football. He's I know, but like, I just wanted to play devil's yeah, advocate okay, to the person. Right. No, this is just a football guy. Come on. He's just football. Uh he's growing the hair back out too, it looks like. I like that. It took him a long yeah. time to get over the strength and conditioning yeah. coach's haircut. <laughs> yeah. I do like that. He's, he's I think it looks good. He, he's got sort of your haircut. A little bit, yeah. Curlier hair. Yeah. But Nice. Both, cool. Uh, yeah. Anyway, what's uh, what's yours? <laughs> Number three on my list. This was the uh, the uh, uh, the equivalent of Kelly Olynyk to the Pistons for me. Uh, Demar Derozan getting traded to the Bulls, sign and trade with the uh, the San Antonio Spurs. Um, the Bulls have, if not the Lakers, the Bulls I would say are the one team so far in NBA free agency that have made the the best or like the most notable moves. They're shaking it up. They sign Lonzo Ball. They they get Alex Caruso from the Lakers. They get Tony Bradley. There's some optimism brewing in chicago and if i was a bulls fan i'd be excited uh the bulls are not going to win the nba title um but you know if you're a fan of a team you you just need like some reason to care some reason to feel like things are going the right way charlotte uh but i'm not a bulls fan so i looked at this and i was just like oh okay it just feels like you're you're in business class like moving seats around you're like like the flight attendant came back and like sir um could you maybe like move to this seat over here (laughs) and it doesn't matter you're not in first class you're not you're not flying the plane you're, you're the Chicago Bulls, for God's right. sakes. Like, it, but it's been a long time for Bulls fans since they've done anything of note. Uh, Der- the Derrick Rose era was a long time ago. So uh, this is exciting. But DeMar DeRozan, the, 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 the moves the Bulls have made, um, and DeMar DeRozan in particular, is, is a guy who is just he, – he might be the most whelming basketball player in the history of the NBA to me. Most whelming. He's just like... He's just, just like, whelming. Yeah. He's definitely... I would know ne- If you said DeMar not DeRozan... Not over, not under. If you said DeMar DeRozan sucked, I would yell at you. And if you said DeMar DeRozan is like awesome, I would yell at you. And I'd be like, he's 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 good. He's really good. But like, he doesn't... He he, he invokes no emotion in me whatsoever. You would not cast him as the yeah. lead in the school mm-hmm. play. No, I would not. Mm-hmm. But he's a very good basketball player. So like, it's it's notable, but it's also like... Is it, it, well, do, you just, do we care? You just brought something up that I think I missed the first time around in talking about why none of this matters. Or the the only reason that everything this week matters, except you know, aside from why it matters for sports media people, it matters for fans because this is the moment where you can take a transaction or an information or something that hasn't happened yet and pin every single hope you've ever had onto yeah. it and start psyching yourself yeah. up. So Demar Derozan to the Bulls is like cool we're starting to build something here yeah 
but still, if Demar Derozan's still really your best player, you're not you're not winning an NBA title. Right. But it, 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 the, the not only the Bulls, Charlotte, but there's also a a sense of uh, Chicago's a city that's like uh, uh, it, it's it's a good sports city where like it feels like the the teams are all interconnected. Like if you're a fan of if you're someone from Chicago and say you're a Bears fan, certainly not a Cubs fan because they just they just nuke the franchise. But say you're a White Sox fan and a Bears fan and a Bulls fan, the White Sox are playing great baseball. The Bears have Justin Fields now. The yeah. Bulls are making moves. Yeah. And suddenly you talk to yourself, DeMar DeRozan, you're like, DeMar DeRozan in Chicago. Lonzo, Justin Fields. Renaissance. Lance Lynn is the <laughs> ace for the Sox. Tony La Russa's getting the ball. Oh, my God. It's Chicago's time. Here we go. That's fun. When really all that happened was you got, like, a B plus, A minus NBA player. I know. To move from San Antonio to Chicago. I know. It's true. <laughs> it's like, that doesn't really matter. And you lost but your whatever. championship team yeah, from yeah. the Cubs, which more people care yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah. Yeah. So, um, there you go. No, okay. I like that uh my number two is that joe burrow deleted all of his social media wow good on you joe and that doesn't matter but that no rules. that matters that is that is cool i love that i love that that's this is my go- this is my dream mark charlotte this is literally my only professional goal same to we need well, to, to make enough money to live happily where i can delete yeah. my social media i want to live in and a world joe burrow has done it I've tried it. I, uh, I, when I was working for the ringer.com on, on two occasions, I deleted my Twitter account. And on two occasions, I got phone calls within hours, like basically trying talking to me as though I was on the, about to jump off a bridge. Are you okay? Is everything okay? Is that, is that, is that, I'm like, well, I'm at the park with my dog, wow. like throwing a ball. And like, I'm actually like, enjoying outside in nature for the first time like no 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 no. this is bad this is very bad <laughs> <laughs> this and is this is defcon yeah either one or ten whichever is the side of the scale that's baddest and so ever since then i'm like man that would be so nice to like just be able to walk i respect it so, so much because no, twitter never you know like whatever i love this it, it doesn't matter really in mm-hmm. the scheme of things though but um also joe burrow is says he's almost 100 percent just about 100 percent and so my large adult son is oh like healthy yeah and i'm just on char so happy <laughs> for him <laughs> okay anyway what's your second uh, number two on my list is the new york giants getting into a fight in practice and the whole the whole team what is that i'm that's my number one that's your so number let's one? just let's do just, this together there we go yeah the uh the giants get into a full <laughs> out team brawl um where daniel jones somehow ends up at the bottom of it which like that, that is, st- stop what? right there that is why this is my number one because that became the funniest image I've seen uh, in guys, my head. Guys, guys, like, guys, stop. The it, red, it, jersey, it, red jersey, yeah. red jersey, red <laughs> jersey. Exactly. All right, continue. <laughs> I just love the idea. Like Daniel Jones, instead of yelling, do you know who my dad is? He's like, do you know what color my jersey is? Leave me alone. <laughs> do you know who Eli is? <laughs> I look like him. <gasps> uh, yeah. yeah the, the, it is, do you think if Daniel Jones isn't at the bottom of this pile, what, how how did the, was it worded? The yes. Tweet, the tweet: A full team ball at Gi- brawl at Giants camp with QB Daniel Jones. Somehow at the bottom of the pile, Joe Judge is absolutely livid. He's got the players lined up now to run. <laughs> That's so this, uh, like middle school. Yeah. If if Daniel Jones isn't involved in this, do you care as much? Like if it's just like a Joe uh, Judge doesn't care as much. Yeah, I think you're right. And so then it doesn't get as much traction. Yeah. But Joe Judge was like, that's literally why we can't have nice yeah. things yeah <laughs> I, I i i think you're right the, the reason this uh it jumps out to me as something that's super important it's like oh my god a team is fighting the quarterback is yeah the red jersey is not be, the sanctity of the red jersey not being respected this is a huge deal uh the reason i uh, or what made me realize it's not a big deal is that you can go either way with this where on the one hand uh the giants are completely dysfunctional this is a nightmare the, the, the locker room has been lost the season hasn't even started and they're already fighting each other this is a disaster or you could argue i love the passion from the guys <laughs> they're taking it they a lot of teams are just out there just stretching and just throwing balls around and and you know they're just in their shorts yep. and and playing grab ass out there at practice not the new york giants the new york football giants are getting after it <laughs> putting a helmet on a helmet playing some good old-fashioned football and they care they care. They care. Um, and ultimately, we're going to know when the season starts and the Giants suck that I guess there was a dysfunction. But it, it, it could go either way, and that's what makes it stupid, is that you can draw whatever conclusion you want from this. Totally. Yeah. And the thing that I thought was funniest is Joe Judge. Yeah. Joe Judge, is his name is Judge, and he has to be the one that's like, 
adjudicating. Yeah. <laughs> He's also a you know former Pats guy, like defense, offense. I don't know, offensive lineman coach. Yeah, is that what he was? I don't know. I don't I know don't. Joe Judge's history. I know that uh... he just is like doing his thing out there, and dad can't keep the kids from fighting and. Blowing the whistle to get everybody to run is also a hilarious visual that, like, grown men are just beating the hell out of each other. And a guy's just like, <laughs> hey, yes. hey, hey, yes. hey, 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 on the line, on the line, on the line. The reason this is so funny is because this should have happened in elementary school. Yeah. And they are just, and the way the tweet is written, it's like, wow, now they're in trouble. They got to run. And yeah. you're just like, this is. You know what we should do sometime? Make what? a top five list of actions that are done in the sports world. <laughs> mm. where uh the guy doing the action is super mad but it's like if you really think about it it's like the funniest thing ever like yes. joe, the joe judge blowing a whistle and you're like bill belichick smashing the I'm, tablet yeah i'm so hot <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do it i'm gonna blow the whistle it, it. there it is <laughs> Saban, now you've done Saban's it headphones? oh yeah. man i love this yeah let's do that soccer refs running up and uh giving a yellow card like Should that, we do what this a in- hilarious visual that is where soccer refs <laughs> like a guy like i could take my cleat charlotte and take it off and just like stab you in the neck and you're bleeding out of the neck and the soccer ref will run up and be like that is enough sir here's a red card <laughs> wait let's <laughs> do this like, list what? at the show on friday That's it'll have list. nothing to do with anything yeah. but it'll be fun the funniest thing is, yeah when you get absolutely heated I think uh, blowing the whistle is really funny, but it works. Like as a yeah, guy that plays it's sports, the like only rule because your condition is Pavlov. Being yeah, <laughs> Pavlov. What's your number one? <laughs> it really does work. It really works. You hear the whistle and you're like, oh shit! God damn it! I, I did it. Uh, number one for me is the Los Angeles Lakers, just in general. <laughs> everything about them. <laughs> everything about the Los Angeles yeah. Lakers. Uh, every off-season move they made. I mean uh, that that is a thing of beauty. Look Spa- at that. Space Jam 2 in general. Um, just uh, the, the entire existence of the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, you name it. Let me ask you a question. Number one is the Los Angeles Lakers for me. What? Are they cheapening the memory of the franchise? Uh, the, the, what do you mean? This is the this is the franchise. This is the, the Los Angeles Lakers sign the big names and say this is going to work. And then we don't know if it's going to work or not. Okay. That is what the franchise okay. does. I was just thinking of. What do you mean? Like the Space Jam 2, like the gimmickiness, or the, or has that always been it too? Oh, oh, you mean, wh- what franchise are you talking about? The Lakers or the Space Jam? I don't know now. When you say Now that you asked me, I don't know which one I was talking about, and I think I was talking about Space Jam. Oh. I thought I was talking about the Lakers, but I think I'm actually talking <laughs> what, about Space Jam. <laughs> say this again. What's your question? I don't <laughs> My question is, how is this going to go? How is this going to go? It's going to be a disaster. Russell Westbrook can't shoot. Um, and Russell Westbrook is not as good as he used to be. I love mm. Russell Westbrook. In I the do sense too. That he's big, big, very fun to cheer for. Yes. Very likable guy from my perspective. Uh, but he is not the answer for the Los Angeles Lakers. So you're asking yourself, is Carmelo Anthony the answer? And the answer to that is no, Charlotte. No. Because Carmelo Anthony is coming from the Portland Trail Blazers, who are, have found themselves in a position where they are trying to make Damon Lillard happy. Why are they trying to make Damon Lillard happy when Damon Lillard has made it clear that he hates joining super teams, wants to play for the same team that drafted him, all that kind of stuff. Suddenly, Damian Lillard might leave. Why might he leave, Charlotte? Because he has no help. Because no one, he, he just played in however many playoffs in a row now where he he's the only guy. He's carrying the entire team. You know who was on his team last year? This past season, Carmelo Anthony, Carmelo Anthony. who did nothing, right. did not help. He had like one brief moment in time against the Nuggets where that was his former team and, and the fans were booing him where he was like, all right, I'm going to show up and play six good minutes of basketball <laughs> in this series. Uh, otherwise, Carmelo does basically nothing for right. Portland, which is why Damian Lillard's not happy in the first place. But that same guy who is now a year older is going to come to Los Angeles and solve all of the Lakers' problems from losing to the mm-hmm. to the Suns in the first round. I, I, the, I As people have said, uh, th- this team to me is – and they, they signed Dwight Howard too, by the I way. I know, which that, is like, that is the funniest part. This team would be unbelievable – in 2013 it is not 2013 yes. this team would be unstoppable in 2013 they, they would go 82-0 and in 2013 i it have is a not few thoughts about this team lebron just keeps signing older guys that he wants to hang out with yeah. also to prove that he can do it as an older guy um i also think that this was russ's best shot at revenge against kd for leaving him mm-hmm. in oklahoma he was like 
oh, okay, you left. I went through all this shit. Then I end up on the Wizards. Are you kidding me, man? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go. And in Russ's mind, I could see him spinning this as like, I'm going to be on a better super team than the super team you're on. Like, yeah. it's on, like this to me is the, he had that whole revenge tour where he was just chirping Durant and subtweeting him with his outfits and all this stuff in 2016. I think this is Russ's, what he hopes will be his final revenge. And I don't think it's going to work. And I think it's going to be, absolutely hilarious to watch yeah all of this go down yeah yeah and uh, we're gonna talk about it not you and i but the sports world oh god every every second of every oh god i'm already exhausted going to be, yeah i'm exhausted thinking about the lakers media cycle but there, there's no site the cycle means like the, the, my understanding is the cycle has like a the cycle is a black hole mark yeah it's just a black hole it's there's just, just like no a cycle like goes around and you end up where you i don't know there's like a beginning and an end there's like we just did one revolution of the cycle i don't think <laughs> the, it's just a the hole. lakers it's is a just, point it's just a point it's just a point <laughs> i don't know uh but yeah oh, the lakers man. in general uh this is uh I don't know. I guess I, I, I understand why it's noteworthy because they, they certainly are names. Carmelo Anthony, <laughs> Russell Westbrook, Dwight Howard. Malik Monk is really good. Wayne Ellington. Shout out to Wayne Ellington, by the way. This picture we're showing in the studio here. That he gets <laughs> he gets uh, some run in the picture. Yeah. That's a that's good for Wayne Ellington. I'm thrilled about that. That he's a uh, he's he's returning to the to the Lakers. Um, but yeah, in general, I don't think it matters. I don't no, think the Los matter. Angeles Lakers Nothing are. Nothing matters. Uh, um, but these were the that. top five things. That really didn't matter. Yeah. How about the we could do this every week? The, the Celtics, <laughs> yeah, what doesn't matter? The Celtics haven't done much of anything. How does that make you feel? Is they got rid of Celtics Kemba fan? and Evan, who yeah. are both now in the Knicks. Yeah. I don't know how it makes me feel. They haven't signed anybody. They haven't really done anything. It means that Brad's biding his time. It means that Brad's yeah. going back to Indiana. I know. That's what I'm wondering. Shut up. Don't. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. You're looking at, you're waiting for me to say that he's going back to Indiana. No, Brad, the, the Celtics haven't done anything. Does, is that news to you? Feels like a trick question. Do you, the, the question, Charlotte, do you care that at a time in the NBA calendar when you're supposed to be splashy, you're supposed to be the Los Angeles Lakers and say, we are the premier franchise, we are signing everybody, Brad Stevens just sat on his hands and said, how do, you, how do contracts work again? He's Googling contracts. Yes, I do care. You care. But I won't care. If it turns out he's playing the long game and had something else he was working on, that turns out to be better. But right now, I care. Okay. All right. That's it. Is there That's anything it. else? I don't think so. Okay. What else do we got? I, I'm asking Come you. to the live show? Come to the live show. Send yeah, us emails. Friday. I'm so sorry. I was so excited to read the emails because they were so phenomenal. But we will get to them. Um and you should, if you're in LA, you know, swing by. We'll let you know where it is. We'll let you know where it is. There it is. That's it. Send Charlotte emails. See you guys. Bye.